Awesome. Thank you, Max. Uh, thank you, uh, Brian, Roslyn, Ninja's board and members. Uh, welcome to our program, The Journey Continues. Uh, this is also the title of the poetry book featuring the words and musings of Peter Kenichi Yamamoto. My name is Jerry Walkie and I'll be your host. Uh, we have a great lineup of friends and family reading pieces from his book being published as we speak. And uh, we've also got a little something at the end too, so please stay on and, and, and watch the entire thing. Uh, there was a large outpouring of those who wanted to be involved. Uh, it was quite overwhelming actually, and hopefully we'll be able to do something uh, something larger a little bit later, but we do have a little time constraint, so it is it is uh, what it is, so we can get to that raffle that you've been waiting for as well. Uh, this book, The Journey Continues, is a testament to a life that encompasses love, joy, anger, and acceptance. Uh, it was an existence filled with experiences and self-discovery all the way through. And even though Pete's not here physically with us, uh, we understand that not only his journey continues, but the journey of each and every one of us. And so let's get this program rolling. Let me first introduce Rosalind Tonai, Executive Director of the National Japanese American Historical Society to share some words. Rosalind? Hi, Jerry. Nice to see you. Um, thank you for joining us. I just wanted to um, read off some of the items that are in our um, upcoming book that um, Pete was so eager to publish. Um, so I'll just uh, go quickly. Um, it was with great sadness and heavy hearts that we informed you that of our longtime volunteer Peter Yamaguchi Moto passed away suddenly on Sunday morning, May 27, 2018, just a month short of his 64th birthday. Peter was a longtime community activist, a fixture in San Francisco's Japantown, who welcomed all to the National Japanese American Historical Society's Peace Gallery on Post Street. He valued his friendships from all sectors of society. For those who have known him, he was one of the most caring and considerate persons who always carried the most generous feelings for others. We are sure that the San Francisco Japantown community feels his loss as much as we do here at the Historical Society, where he clocked in tens of thousands of volunteer hours over the course of his 27 years of service. We are so grateful to have known this remarkable poet, thinker, social activist, who always put people and their struggles first. Peter grew up in San Francisco and Mere Beach and became an activist in the 1970s as a resident at the I Hotel during its final days, making him a key witness to a critical event in Asian American history. Peter was active in the anti-war movement, was involved in the Kearney Street Workshop, Japantown Art and Media Workshop, Manila Town Heritage Foundation, the Aaron Watata Defense Committee, and the Comfort Women Issue. He assisted the Tea Lake Pilgrimage and was involved with the Annual Day of Remembrance and grew concerned about the long-term preservation of Japantown. On November 22, 2016, he initiated and helped organize an interactive wall of compassion as San Francisco's Japantown's response in the aftermath of anti-Muslim and anti-immigration rhetoric of the 2016 election campaign. You know, thank you for your love and your support. Peter died just before he was about to publish his next book. So after two years in the making, with the help of his mother, Judith, we are pleased to present The Journey Continues. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Rosalind. So first up, we have Lena Hoshino, a uh, documentary filmmaker and currently now a, a pie baker up in Petaluma, California. Um, she was a friend of Peter's and originally met Peter through Nose, a Nikkei group that came together right after 9-11. And so uh, I asked her to uh, share some words, but uh, you know, a lot, a lot of folks were a little apprehensive to uh, to, to, to be on live, but 
luckily we were able to do this uh, recording, but she is on uh, with, with us uh, and reading one of Peter's poems, Lino Hoshino. A wind is blowing from Fukushima. I had a talk with a woman about nuclear energy. The wind was blowing from Hiroshima to Fukushima. Her Japanese eyes, her mouth speaking. How long does radiation contamination last? The light blue of the sky and white clouds passing. Cobblestones under our feet, a major earthquake or another tsunami. Can bring a disaster of meltdown and explosion in Japan again. Unsafe nuclear plant reactors, not only in Japan with earthquake fault lines, but here in California too. I held the chopsticks idly as I sat later in the day. And the young mothers trundled by with babies in strollers, and old men sat with their cups of coffee. Who knows what the real radiation levels in Japan are now? Traces have been found in lakes far from Daiichi plant. I love to eat sashimi, sashimi made from tuna and big fish that swim the ocean round through contaminated waters in Japan and into my mouth and Japanese people love and depend on seafood and now the agricultural fields near Fukushima radiation not fit for consumption and we're doing it again, we're creating global warming, a wind is blowing from Hiroshima to Chernobyl, to Fukushima, and I am wearing short sleeves. That was Lena Hoshino. Next we have Leon Sun, a uh, good friend of Peter's. He also is a fellow artist and also the designer of the artwork for Peter's book. So help me welcome Leon Sun. Here is a humbly presented extemporaneous poem. Listen. The sun listened to the land and peace reigned. The beaver building his dam listened to the rushing creek and trout and salmon had a home in placid ponds. The needle trailing a thread listened and a patch was sown. The wheat listened to the wind and the whole field was pollinated. The car tire listened, sensed the road, and lasted much longer. The toddler listened to his pet dog and gained a lifetime guardian. An angry working man listened to his wife and gained love. A boss listened to his employee and gained a cord. A monk listened to a layman and gained a disciple. Kuan Yin listened to the cries of the people and saved sentient beings. The man listens to his mother and gain eternal peace. A man listened to his father and conquered worlds within. Listen, listen to the wind speaking as it moves among tall trees, as it rustles through tall grass and lakeside rushes. Listen to the tides of human emotions crying to be heard by compassionate and patient ears. Listen with a slow cadence of sensitivity and caring so as to love the world and practice empathy and compassion. Listen, it is for you, it is for me. I will listen, no fast dismissal or overbearing self-aggrandizement. Listen to the valleys speaking between the hills and mountains. Forgive me so many times I promise to listen and be sensitive and act with care. I promise. Thank you, Leon. Next, we have Jeremy Chan. Jeremy is an attorney for the Asian Pacific Islander Legal Outreach. Uh, Jeremy first met Pete while working at Ninjas via the Nikkei Community Internship Program and is very grateful to him for sharing his wisdom and experiences. Uh, Jeremy also mentioned that Pete was very supportive of his efforts to create Ito Yosakoi, a dance program based in Japantown, 
And so Jeremy chose to read Dance in his memory. Dance. He blew, and the music filled the air, and the children danced on the dreams of the elderly, now gone, in a spirit of joy and exuberant love of life. And the youth danced to the rhythms of blues, R&B, and jazz. The joyous, happy children, after work and on the weekend, in a spiraling, irritating, soft explosion of life. And the children who danced on the memories of the aged ones now gone, on the sacred ground built on the watering hole of a thousand back-breaking, workaholic, vegetable and fruit-picking itinerant hands, floating between the agricultural lands of the valley and the Emerald City. Dance, like your calloused hands believed it, and your arm clasped your willing waist and the music spun you round at the day's end, and you felt it. Thank you, Jeremy. Next up, we have Jenny Lim, who is the San Francisco Jazz Poet Laureate in 2018. Uh, she has performed in poetry and music collaborations with such late great jazz legends as Max Roach and Herbie Lewis. Her work has been featured at the World Poetry Jazz Festivals in Venezuela, Bos uh, her award-winning play Paper Angels focusing on Chinese immigrants detained on Angel Island in the San Francisco Bay during the Chinese Exclusion Era aired on PBS in 1985 and was reprised in 2010, garnering such awards with the San Francisco Fringe Festival and the San Seattle Fringe Festival in St. Louis, Missouri in 2017. Lim's performance piece, Don't Shoot a Requiem in Black, dedicated to Black Lives Matter premiered in a safe house or at safe house in 2017 and was also presented, uh, presented at the San Francisco Jazz Poetry Festival in 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenny Lim. Pinoy Jazz. Moving syncopated notes up and down a keyboard, the sweet sounds of sweet vocals. This is the night. They give us this night and jazz. Jazz harmonies born in a Fillmore past, wrapped in mango leaves and found again on Kearney Street. Again, I sat on the sidelines. We ran barefoot through the fields together in a Hawaiian sugarcane strike. The Japanese and the Pinoys coming together beyond Lumpia and Pancit and the SF Filipino American Jazz Festival. Dance, dance you manongs of the old international hotel. Listen to the chords of life and happiness, your fight then for low-income housing and community built this new hotel on this same spot now. You lost then, but now you've won. And now we ourselves win again in your long bolo knife-etched struggle and cool green Banana leaves contrast a deep-hued blue sky and a homegrown Pinoy band that played amplified in Tino's barbershop. He blew and the music filled the air and the children danced on the dreams of the elderly, now gone in the spirit of joy and exuberant love of life and the youth danced to the rhythms of blues, R&B, and jazz, and joyous, happy children after work, and on the weekend, in a spiraling, irradiating, soft explosion of life, and the children who danced on the memories of the aged ones now gone, on the sacred ground built on the watering hole of a thousand back-breaking workaholic vegetable and fruit-picking itinerant hands floating between the agricultural lands of the valley and the Emerald City. Black Lives Matter. 
High above an American city, a wild bird flies around the sun, in and out of the clouds, free and alive. Later, a youth, nearly always a black mother's son, lies on the ground, life out of his body, blood on the concrete sidewalk, the asphalt street, and that smoking gun held by a white cop. Now, wait a minute. I'm not making this up. It's true. How many videotaped, witnessed, documented shootings of African American youth who were largely unarmed shot by white men in blue? I'm not prejudiced against the cops. There are videos of police murder, one after another, Mario Woods, so many others. The wild bird lies fallen from the broad skies, and its broken body changes back and forth on the hard ground from the dead body of a bird, with the lights gone out in his eyes. To the crumpled form of an African-American youth, and back and forth passing in a dream, and back and forth, how long before we all speak out together against this slaughter? Yes, death. How long till we no longer feel the numbness that forgets and forgives the pain? Never forget. This is happening across the land and we must feel the anger. Let rise the anger, vent the action. Asian Americans for Black Lives Matter. Black and brown unity for Black Lives Matter. We say this because right now, black lives don't matter. We fly into the sun and scatter the blue angels and the wars and the righteousness of our strong beating wings, our powerful wings of righteousness, even as the for-profit prison factories across this country are filled up with black and brown prisoners swept up from the streets from our communities. An unemployment of black and brown youth, of our sisters and brothers, so much higher than that of whites. This is America. And I don't wanna feel the lazy warmth and suffocating feeling of that apathetic death in life without anger. At least I can say whispering down the SF side streets, echoing down these cold byways, leaving my mouth in a bitter statement under the lonely solitary moon from state to state, north and south, city and country, wherever this exists in America, never forgetting in dark tones to those who should listen and think about it, that black lives matter. So that Peter wrote in 2016. So just FYI, um, you know, I think for for him, uh, that that was that was coming through, and I felt those words coming out as I was reading that and I, channeling him. It, it was it was pretty pretty amazing, and which kind of brings me to like a quote where. Uh, you know, black artist uh, Nina Simone had said that how could you be an artist and not reflect the times? And so, you know, Pete, you know, if you look through this book that's coming out, you will see his 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 not only his vision but his 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 perception his his observation and it's it you know and he'll he has a date on him too for for a lot of them there's there's years on it and it's like a historical document so it, it's quite it, it's quite amazing so make sure when it comes out you are able to to to, to get this next we have somebody very special um next we have uh, Judith Yamamoto, the strong and resilient mother of 
of Peter. Um, and she is somebody who also helped edit this very, very book. And I know this means a lot to her. Um, and accompanying Judith is uh, musician Francis Wong, uh, who's also uh, a community activist, organizer, uh, somebody who I've worked with as well, and somebody who Peter has worked with uh, at the Historical Society. And so now I present to you Judith Yamamoto and Francis Wong. To the people of America, the devil's sun has crossed the sky, gone down in the deep quiet of nighttime darkness. Looking into the mirror on the wall, I see water drops of tears on my lower right eye and above the lid where I rubbed, and I notice them hanging, blobs of water showing mournfully under my black metal glasses rim. I had been reflecting bitterly and sorrowfully and angrily on the videos of the day. Police murders, one in Minnesota, one in Louisiana. Black men shot and murdered again. Alton Stilling and Philandro Castile. Tears filled my eyes and choked my throat. Senseless murders, white cops and black male victims. The video showing conclusively that it was uncalled for. Police murder. Philandro sat slumped, shot as he sat next to his girlfriend in a car. Red blood stains on his shirt. The woman filming it. Filming what was just happening on her cell phone. Calmly and deliberately describing the event in a strong, sure, analytical voice. The police officer outside their car window holding a shaking gun at them. And she filmed and reported with great composure what happened to Philandro. He slumped in blood against her side as she held up the cell phone filming and then suddenly breaking down and crying and swearing and breaking in the horror and grief. And her four-year-old daughter's voice coming over the back seat, chirping over her mother sobbing, don't worry, mama, I'm here. Can you beat that? A four-year-old girl witnessing the murder of Philandro saying in a small, thin and clear voice, don't worry, Mama, I'm here. And I ask you in great aching sadness and emotional fatigue, people of America, are we here? So I'm pretty excited I get to do this intro since I know him so well. <laughs> um, so next up, we have Peter Yamamoto. Uh, he's the de facto poet laureate of Japantown, we shall say. Um, so, just to give a little bit of background, Pete's been a volunteer here at the National Japanese American Historical Society for 26 years now. 26 years. Um, so, he's, um, I forget how many poems you have, but um, his parents are here as well, so say hello to them. And they made a really, really awesome guy, I have to say. So, without further ado, here's my Yeah, am I close enough? Closer? Closer is better? Okay, hi everybody. Uh, I'm not going to take uh, very long to say too much else besides I'll, it's a long poem, so you'll find out about me through my poem. Uh, it was written before, between last night and this afternoon, so I, and it was untitled, so I decided to call it Rant Number 45, Rant versus Federico Garcia Lorca, and, and the writers among us will understand why I entitled that. So I'll begin. The blue, blue sky washes the heavens above my head. And I, I feel the calmness and the quietude and yes, the peace moving all around me 
sitting here in beautiful San Francisco. I was born here. I'm an American citizen. I'm protected by those old laws and institutions spelled out by the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Secure, aren't I? And yet, it was not so long ago when the torn metal and raging fires following the aerial assault, the bombing by the airships of the Imperial Navy of Japan at Pearl Harbor and like assaults in the jungle countries and urban centers of a host of East Asian cities under attack by Imperial Japan, after which, after a declaration of war by then President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, my then 11-year-old father, my father, Lawrence Toshimichi Yamamoto, Tosh, was taken away with his family, dumped in Santa Anita racetrack, winding up at Healy River Concentration Camp under the steel barrels of the United States Army machine guns, among 120,000 other persons of Japanese ancestry, non-citizen and citizen alike. For an average of three years until the victory of America over imperial fascist Japan, most of these prisoners languishing in these hot in summer, snowing in winter concentration camps. Their crime, a supposition of inherent possible allegiance with a country of fascist imperial Japan in times of war, without trial and based solely on their Japanese ancestry and their Japanese features. Now, this, propens this propensity had never been proven. And in fact, there are studies to the contrary. The Munson report of the United States Navy, for one, and also the fact that no Japanese on the mainland was ever convicted of sabotage. So what of it? What of it? Didn't then President Reagan sign an apology from America to most, but not all, of the Japanese who lost everything and whose lives were interrupted, changed forever? Didn't we get our apology? Isn't it all over with and gone? As I sit under the blissful blue skies, washed by gentle sea breezes in beautiful San Francisco, and the waters of the bay and ocean lap playfully the piers and beaches of the peninsula. The year now, 2017, and Donald Trump is already too long in office amidst random acts of mass killings here in America by Arabic or Muslim, same thing in his eyes, radicals, amidst vanishing jobs due to over overwhelming outsourcing of jobs by American corporations and a high rate of unemployment. There are calls and intimations of imprisonment and registration on a mass level of such visible minorities, such as Arabs and Muslims on the other and Latin Americans on the other. There are accusations of these illegal immigrant communities taking advantage of our bountiful emergency rooms, welfare programs, and educational systems to the detriment, yes, to the detriment of good, hardworking Americans. And these weasel Latin Americans are stealing all our jobs, non-citizens that they are, that these Muslims are a bunch of frothing at the mouth, wild-eyed, long-haired, and dirty, crazed jihadists with an unnameable hatred for Americans, and that in their unspeakable dirt and propensity for violence should be put on a national registry and rounded up, put in detention centers, under guard, concentration camps, and that both these groups, the Islamic Arabs and the illegal immigrant Latin Americans, should be rounded up by force and kept either indefinitely in detention and or deported en masse. And this without trial, without any proof of guilt, indiscriminate, and in many cases, disrupting families and communities and history of stable life and tax paying in America. Lives disrupted, tensions in communities created, stress on family relations, Abuse of young children whose innocence has been shattered. 
all in the name of American nationalism and patriotism. And it sounds like, looks like, walks like, talks like the same kind of thing that sent an innocent minority, the Japanese community, to concentration camps in 1942. The laws that sent Japanese Americans to concentration camps are still on the books. And there are those of low caliber of thinking and race hatred who would resurrect them again in our America that saw this mistake before and who now sees Trump and company and their illogical race hatred raise it again. Hussein and Maria swinging on swings in a Chicago playground, up and down, back and forth, back and forth, winging and flying, competing, competing and outdoing each other, eight-year-olds in their child right, cloudy sky above, yellow, white, black, yellow, uh, yellow, white, black sand below, small scuffed shoes. My family was visited by ICE agents last night, Maria confided sadly. They took Papa away. I'm scared. Last week, big men in trench coats came from the FBI. They searched our apartment, intoned Hussein. They looked at each other, frightened eyes, and nodded. Simply for wanting a better life, they came to America. They take jobs that we would, ne we would never do. They pay taxes and are good neighbors and people, many of them citizens who have been racially profiled. The danger of what happened, 1942, 1942, is real and present. Let cooler and more rational heads prevail. Stop Trump, stand up for the rights of Islamic Arabs and other Middle Easterners and Latin Americans under attack, threatened with mass unjust incarceration and deportation. Be vigilant. Basta. Enough. the opportunity uh, to, to host this event. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you can hear me right now. I, I've got to notice that says my internet, inter, internet connection is unstable. But I really wanted to uh, make note of the fact that uh, this, this book is, is, is being published as we speak once again, and we will be uh, getting this out uh, very soon. So make sure that you are checking into the ninjas website so we get that information out to you and thank you again rosalind ninjas and to all the folks that uh were involved with putting this uh book together uh we miss you pete and uh thank you very much for uh joining